now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Samurai Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on Kung Fu killers in this action-packed martial arts Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Samurai Goddess, in paperback and e-readers today. Many comic fans these days say that they are event fatigued, and I have to wonder if the event model is pretty much obsolete. Now, back in the 1980s, Jim Shooter created the event model for storytelling as an effort to try to introduce new readers to comics. And the first big event was the Marvel Comics Secret Wars. And the Secret Wars did a very good job of introducing new readers to the Marvel Universe, introducing readers to the characters of the Marvel Universe in a single story that was not a part of the Marvel Universe that provided them with an easy entry point towards re reading other comics in the Marvel Comics catalog. And the event model was very successful in the 1980s, and in fact it was so successful they wound up expanding upon it, doing it almost every year with many of the major Marvel Comics and with sub-comics like the X-Men which had an annual event every year. And the event model was meant to do two things. One, it was meant to help people discover new titles in the Marvel Universe. And two, it was designed to help mid-card or mid-list titles pretty much find and maintain an audience. Because oftentimes, many B and C list books would pretty much not get purchased by readers. And readers would not find out what was great about them because they featured B and C list characters who were a part of either team books like the Avengers or the Fantastic Four or the X-Men, or they were pretty much really obscure on the edge of the Marvel Comics catalog spectrum, such as Alpha Flight. So those books pretty much got a boost in sales whenever Marvel had an event, because whenever they had the event, what would happen is people would want to buy the titles that tied into the event. So readers who had never tried a title would have an incentive to go out and buy those titles. And that's what the event model pretty much was designed for from a business perspective. It was designed to get readers to try new books and to discover new characters and to, become, and to get to know more about the Marvel Universe and the DC Universe in a single story. Now, most events usually took about 90 days back in the 1980s. They were usually... Uh, established are usually around the fourth quarter or towards the end of the third quarter. They usually started in September and they were usually done by December. And this was also done by design for business because the comic book business, just like any other publishing business, was working towards the holiday season. And the holiday season is a big business in publishing. This is where most readers find new books. This is where most readers try new books. And this is where books start to really pick up an audience. So the timing of these events pretty much gave most publishers a plan for reaching those new readers during the two big seasons. One was the summer season and the other was the holiday season. Because back in the 80s, oftentimes we would have the X-Men event, which was in the summer or so, and that would lead into the big event of the fall. And that was also timed with the publishing schedule of trying to reach the most readers during the two biggest parts of the year, which was the summer reading season and the holiday season. These days, the event has really evolved into what is a monster these days. It used to be an event was contained to maybe a limited series back in the early days of the event model of comics to the mid-1980s where it was just an annual thing done in the third or fourth quarter. Now these events have pretty much evolved to the point where the event is pretty much all year long. And that's one of the core reasons why the event model is failing and why many readers say that they are fatigued. Because instead of having to buy maybe three or four issues to get the core story of an event, or maybe 12 or 13 issues, to get the ancillary parts of the subplots of the event, a reader now has to buy almost 100 issues in certain cases to read all the plot points of the event. And that can be overwhelming for a new reader when comics cost anywhere from three to four dollars. And that doesn't really give the reader an incentive to go out and buy comics on the regular 
because it back in my day in the 1980s, you may have maybe spent money on maybe nine issues, and that was maybe a dollar a piece. So it was only nine dollars to get all the core parts of the event. But these days, at four or five dollars a comic and a hundred comics, that's literally five or six hundred dollars. So the reader pretty much is feeling a real hit on their pocket if they try to buy all the events in a comic. And they're really feeling no incentive to buy these events because just as one event storyline ends, they go and start another event storyline. And that can be very overwhelming for the reader to get into. And that's really overwhelming for them to have to digest all these events and all the things that happen in that event. It's just too much for the reader to handle. Now, back in the 1980s when they did start the event model, oftentimes you would have maybe six or seven months of regular issues that you could pick and choose to buy or you could just start buying on the regular and all of those pretty much allow that character to have their own adventures take on their own rogues gallery and deal with their own life and that pretty much gave the reader a nice rest from all the major action in the events however with this event model being pretty much spread across the entire catalog the reader doesn't have a chance to rest, and even worse, they don't get a chance to get to know any of the characters or get a reason to care about any of the characters in that universe because oftentimes, just as you're getting to know a character, they wind up dead in an event or something bad happens to them. And that time that you would take to get to know that character in their own series, you never get a chance to do because that character is something always terrible happens to them or something happens in their supporting cast, and because the books are so tied into events, you never get to see what's really great about these characters and get a reason to care about them or to connect with them. And that's one of the other big problems with this event model as it stands right now. It's just too big, it's just too broad, it covers too many titles, and then just as the readers are getting into the titles, oftentimes we either have another event or the character's title usually gets canceled because they can't find a way to interweave it into the event. So it's like, ironically, the event as the event model has become what it wasn't supposed to be. I mean, the event model's goal originally, again, was to help struggling titles and to help readers enter the, the comic book universe and to get to know the characters. Now, these days, whenever you read an event, it's almost impossible to get to know the characters. It's almost impossible to find an entry point. And it's almost impossible to pick up titles that were B and C list titles because oftentimes at the end of the event, these titles usually wind up getting canceled as part of a reboot or a relaunch. So all the, the foundations of the event have pretty much been compromised in today's modern event model. Today's modern event model pretty much creates a wall between new readers and the comic book universes. It pretty much prevents readers from finding entry points into a Marvel or a DC universe, and it pretty much prevents readers from getting to know the characters. So when we look at this event fatigue, the reason why people are tired of it is because they see no reason to buy these comics, because if there's always constantly an event, there's no real reason for you to get to know this character, because there is no entry point, and every comic has to be an entry point for a new reader. If there are no entry points, then the new reader has no incentive to come in, and the older reader has no incentive to pretty much stay with it, because all it is is one non-stop story, and it goes from one story to the next, and that's just overwhelming for the reader. I look at the event model as it stands right now, and it really is an obsolete concept we really need to go back to basic three to five issue story arcs where the character stands on their own and allow that character to develop an audience and allow readers to get to know that character because if readers get to know the character that's going to sell the comic and that and then when you create stories for the character that's going to allow readers to get to know the character and see what's great about them and give, that will give them incentive to buy these comics on the regular but as it stands right now this event model is as i see it again obsolete it is an archaic formula for trying to reach new readers 
it had its heyday in the 1980s, but here in 2017, it's an obsolete concept, and most comic publishers really need to stop with the events and just focus on the individual titles and focus on three to five issue story arcs, which pretty much allow the reader to get to know the character, get to know the character's supporting cast, get to know the character's rogues gallery, and get to know what's great about these characters and connect with them, form a relationship with them, and identify with them. In order to get the reader involved, they have to have a incentive to buy the stories, and events these days just don't give readers an incentive to buy comics anymore, especially when it literally costs almost $500 to get all the issues of a major comic story. And I look at that cost in proportion to entertainment value, and comics just can't compete when it costs that much money to buy into a story. I mean, I can think of ebooks which give you an entire story for only 99 cents, and I can think of many TV shows like Netflix shows which give you an entire season um, in less than a week. And that just can't compare to almost taking a year out of your life to read an entire comic storyline that's based on an event. It's just too overwhelming, and the cost per entertainment dollar just doesn't add up to a significant value. So the reader has no incentive to go out and buy comics because the comics cost more entertainment value um, per dollar than many other forms of entertainment out here, such as comic books, YouTube videos, um, e-books, and even paperbacks, and it just can't compete. That's why things have to go to back to being about selling the characters in their own series, and that's going to give people a lower entertainment value per dollar because a $4 comic or a $13 trade paperback has a value that can compete with television, with movies, with DVDs, and it gives people an incentive to buy these comics and not feel any sort of um, re reason to continue buying other books, but to just buy the books of their favorite character. And that really is going to help the comic book industry get those new readers and really rebuild an audience with the next generation. You can buy many of my ISIS series books by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to donate to this channel, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.